Hi friends, welcome to Wanderlust channel. This is our third video on the group of monuments at Mahabalipuram. In this video we are exploring Rayagapuram, Rock Cut Varaha Temple, Ganesha Ratha, Krishna's Butterball and few other monuments. So let's get started. In last two videos we explored Shore Temple and few other monuments in Mahabalipuram. If you haven't seen those videos please see those first, and then continue on this one. I will add links in above cards and in description. Last video we stopped at Lighthouse, from there now we are going to Ramanuja Mandapa. Unlike the other Mandapas, Ramanuja Mandapa has peculiar front facade, which looks like it is unfinished. The Ramanuja Mandapa was once a fully finished cave temple dedicated to Lord Shiva built by Paramasvara Varman I, however it was totally vandalized during the Vaishnava resurgence. The sanctums inside this mandapa doesn't have any deities in them. They might probably have been removed, while these cave being attacked. The front facade which is a striking dissimilarity with the rest of the construction, was originally built during the Vijayanagara Empire. It is known as the Trimurthi Temple. A temple dedicated to the holy trinity of the Hindu religion, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. On top of this mandapa there is a structure built with rock blocks and rock pillars, from there you can see the surrounding structures like the lighthouse, Ishwara temple, Royagapuram etc. Now we are going to Royagapuram which is also known as Rayargapuram. Rayargapuram is an unfinished tower. Had it been constructed completely, it would have been a magnificent structure. Perhaps, this was planned to be a gateway of all the monuments in the hill. It is not known what was the objective of this tower and the reason why this is called as Rayargapuram. Rayargapuram has two pillars in the middle. Both the pillars have the image of a lady standing on top of Yali, the mythological animal. The above panel of both the pillars have the images of Dasha Vathar. Apart from these pillars, there are two pairs of pilasters in the front side of the tower, and two similar pairs of pilasters in the back side. Let's go to Draupathi's bath. As we climb the rocks and there are some more steps leading to a pond, and it is locally known as the Draupathi's bath. There are also water channels carved on the rock boulders suggesting the existence of some residential complex in this area. These might be an indication that a palace complex once stood in this place. Remember the myth of ocean god Varuna attacking Mahabalipuram, and it is said that the splendid palaces were washed away. So it is not improbable that one such palace existed here. There is a stone bed with a lion pillow at one end of it, suggesting that it might be the seat of the king, Simpasana, but there is no other construction around it. It is popularly known as the Dharmaraja's rock-cut throne. Here is rock-cut Varaha temple. As we entered into the Varaha temple there was a visual treat right near the entrance of the temple. It was the panel depicting the rescue of Budevi by Vishnu in his Varaha avatar. The Varaha panel features the four-armed Vishnu lifting Budevi from the abyss. In the rear hands he carries a Shanka and Chakra. Vishnu has placed his foot is on the serpent Sheshanaga. Surya is seen on the top left, Chandra is shown among clouds on the top right and Brahma and Narada standing behind Varaha. On the opposite side of the wall, we found the Trivikrama panel. This panel shows Vishnu and Vimana avatar. The Ganesha Ratha is a fully completed rock-cut structure, while nearby Rathas are incomplete. The current stone Ratha is a replica of a wooden version which preceded it. 
its construction is credited to Narasimhavarman I, who reigned 630 to 688 AD. The temple was originally dedicated to Shiva, but in the 1880s, villagers replaced the Shiva Linga with an image of Ganesha. This rock, which looks like someone has scooped it out of a hill, is known as the Krishna's Butter Ball. It is believed that this rock was there for at least 1,000 years. During the olden times, the European rulers of India tried to move this rock with the help of elephants but they couldn't. This is triple-celled rock-cut shrine. There are three shrines dedicated to Brahma, Siva, and Vishnu. The shrine of Shiva is slightly larger than the others. There is a pair of Dwarapalas guarding the entrance of each shrine, one on either side. The northernmost cell dedicated to Subramanya in the form of Brahma Sasta, the central standing Siva, and the northernmost to Vishnu. Further north of these shrines is a niche dedicated to Durga. In this kitchen, these giant monoliths can be seen hugging one another near the Arjuna's Penance Monument and Krishna's Butter Ball. We will continue our journey through the other monuments in the next video. I will add it in the description, in above cards, and in the end credits once it is published. Thank you for watching the video, please hit like button, if you like the video, subscribe the channel for more videos like this. Thank you. See you in the next.